So in this one, let's talk about rate limiter. We are dissecting an engineering blog from Stripe called Scaling Your API with Rate Limiters. Again, super interesting blog. We are one Google search away from finding it. This is the title of the blog. This is the snippet of the blog. Okay. okay. So we'll be dissecting this blog, talking about rate limiters. What makes this blog really interesting on how Stripe bridged the gap between engineering and business and made sure that their rate limiters do not like they added rate limiters at four tiers to make sure that that business always remains up and running. It's very interesting of an idea on how they have tackled it. So let's jump right in. So rate limiters are critical. I won't bore you with <laughs> what rate limiters are, but you know that rate limiters are critical rate limiters. They help you handle the sudden surge of traffic that happens right? and make sure that the quality of your service that you're offering is not getting affected. Right? It's you're not leading to outages. Worst case outages does not happen. Right? Now, the core reason you want rate limiters is you want to make sure things are available under unpredictable workload. You need to make sure that especially Stripe because it's multi-tenant in nature. Each of the customer of Stripe is a tenant. It needs to make sure that if one of their customers is making too many requests, it doesn't affect another. So ensuring fair usage across tenants is what they need to make sure. And there are certain requests which are lower priority. So a set of low priority requests coming in your system should not affect, like should not eat up your entire infra capacity. Now think about it. What queries the customer of Stripe would fire, Stripe even don't know. But from one of their customers, if they get a lot of low priority requests, that might be problematic. So they want to make sure this does not happen. And they have to offer, of course, deliver a predictable latency. Now, existing solutions don't work for Stripe, like existing load balancers that we typically see is because just by throttling at a per request level, it doesn't scale, right? Because it's just per request level, you're checking for every single request at multiple places and then deciding it doesn't scale. Load shedding, if you're shedding your load and like rejecting request without any prior uh, notification or prior or sorry without any prioritization it leads to your poor user experience you don't want that to happen either right? and just one layer of rate limiter doesn't stand a chance today right at least for stripe it doesn't stand a chance they need more contextual awareness this will be clear when we cover subsequent parts right? and of course the biggest problem with rate limiter is your cascading failure problem or uh, for not using rate limit is cascading failure problem you have high load you get high increased latency, your client starts timing out, your client retries, and it leads to even higher load. Okay? So how do you deal with all these things nicely is where your rate limiter comes in. Okay? okay, now let's jump into the core design principles of rate limiters as per strike, what they wanted to optimize on. So what they wanted to do was they wanted multiple independent protection layers. They said instead of having one, we want to have multiple. So they went with four layers, which will what we'll discuss in some time. They want to prioritize service reduction over outages. So it's okay if some of the requests they are unable to handle, but they don't want complete outage. Right? Rate limiter failures should not affect API availability, which means that in case my rate limiter layer is down, it should not mean that my entire service is down. Like by default, your requests are rejected. So a way to do it is if your rate limiter is down, you just let every request go through right? and load shedding. This is an interesting one. Like most people don't talk about load shedding. So load shedding is simple that there are in case of load shedding, the whole idea is simple that your low priority request can be rejected because the resources are required by a higher priority request. This is what you need to implement. Right. So for example, in summers, we face electricity outages, right? That's load shedding. Essentially, they take away electricity from our share and give it to industries, maybe industries or whoever, right? So the idea is you have limited capacity to handle and you do not want your low priority stuff hogging up stuff. So you get rid of your low priority thing right? and you move your and you give infra capacity to higher priority. We'll discuss how they implement this. So although I've given the spoiler, but let's still dig deeper. And there are four tier rate limiting solution by Stripe. The four tier are 
request rate limiter this is what we typically call as rate limiter second is concurrent request limiter third is fleet usage load shedder and fourth is worker utilization load shedder right so two rate limiters two load shedders let's dig deep so first one is request rate limiter now request rate limiter is what we typically call rate limiter where your, the idea is to restrict a user to fire only n requests per second so if the user fires more request right they limit the request right here simple token based like token based algorithm they have used tokenized bucket token bucket algorithm they use nothing fancy per second the bucket gets refilled you have token for each request and after a second it refreshes 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 that's what they did right so they did token based rate limiter of dead simple implementation it protects even when a user runs a gigantic script or something it doesn't affect the load so here we see that the requests are getting staggered right so here the request was increasing rate limiter enabled rate limiter triggered it started controlling the request over here this is your request based rate limiter now here what you can also do or what stripe also allows them to do is they change this configuration at a per tenant level to handle more requests during a flash sale let's say a customer says hey let's say 100 requests per second is not enough for me i need to handle more requests so they hop on a call with stripe and they increase their limit for that duration so during that flash sale they increase the number of requests per user that can be made on the platform right so this is a standard request based rate limiter second is concurrent request limiter so what it says it's interesting it says that instead of you can use our api 1000 times a second this rate limiter says you can only have 20 apis in progress at the same time so it's not either or both rate limiters are active at the same time so but the core idea is that i should not be making this type of request more than 20 times in parallel why because let's say there are some endpoints which are much more resource intensive than others let's say blunt example video encoding nothing to do with stripe but just giving you a blunt example that although i can make large number of requests right but now imagine if all these requests are different but out of all these different types of requests there are certain type of requests which are very expensive so although my global rate limiter says 1000 requests per second but in that there might be requests 100 requests for video encoding and in that i can only have 10 at a time 10 in progress at a given point in time right so think of those levels of classification so there are some requests which are resource intensive so that's why you cannot let all 100 requests of this high resource intensive thing to be running so this is the second line of defense kind of right so here the idea is to make sure that such type of requests don't hog up the cpu and you control them so treat here like see this diagram where you see a low if you just do it simple cpu based so low cpu usage request medium cpu medium cpu usage request high cpu and very high cpu so you have rationed your high and very high cpu request here so as soon as they saw that hey a lot of requests are coming in they control it because you do not want this high cpu usage request like so many of them being handled at the same time it's a requirement imagine video transcoding i know i don't want to handle more than 10 video transcoding requests although i can handle thousand requests in general but out of that at max 10 can be video transcoding request if i get more i need to control it that's a good way to think of it so this is concurrent request limiter right then the next one is fleet usage load shedder the idea is again very simple that across my fleet what i'm doing is i want to say that i want to reserve my fleet capacity of 20 percent for my critical request 80 percent can be non-critical but i want to reserve at every point in time I want to reserve 20% of my infra capacity for critical request. Minimum 20%, right? Not maximum, minimum 20%. So this ensures that given that 
for a company like Stripe, not every request is equally important, right? Some requests would be more critical than others. So they bifurcate their API request as critical and non-critical methods. And their rate limiter, essentially what it does, again, they use simple Redis to do the rate limiting. What they need to do is that 20% of their critical request, like they have their infra reserve, 20% of infra reserve for their critical request. And non-critical request, if it goes beyond it, it starts rejecting. Now think of it, you'd say, but hey, Arpit, if I can handle more requests, why I'm not able, why I'm not handling the request? The idea is that you need to keep your infra reserved for 20% critical request, although you can handle more, but what they say is don't handle more. The moment you handle more, if at that time critical requests come in, you might not have capacity to handle. So it's more defensive strategy, but it helps them. It helps them very well. So look at this diagram. This diagram very beautifully shows you how they have reserved minimum 20% of their infra. So this blue is non-critical traffic. The orange one is a critical traffic or yellow one is a critical traffic. So what they have made sure is that the infra capacity here, like if you look at this second, uh, sorry, this third bar, here you can see second and third bar where your 80% thing is getting breached for your non-critical request. So they immediately brought down the non-critical request to 80%. Now here if you observe, here you can see that they had capacity to handle more requests. Although they did not get critical requests to handle, but they could have used this capacity to handle non-critical request, but they chose not to handle it. Why? Because they want to reserve their infra 20% for critical request. This way, what it does is you say, but Arpit, you are leaving capacity on the table. Yes, but I don't want to be in a situation where my infra is 100% and I get critical request and I'm unable to handle it. Because for a system, for a fintech, for a payment processor, this cannot happen. For them, this is super important. That's why, right? So depending, so there is no one right answer. It depends on the company, it depends on the domain that they are operating and how they would want to operate, what type of reject they would want to, what type of request they would want to reject, right? Okay, the final one, which is worker utilization load shedder. This is the last line of defense, right? Now here, the idea is simple. This is the last line of defense. So this is what is running on one worker, which means on one server. Right? on one node, on one pod, whatever you may want to call it. It gets triggered very rarely, but during major outages, it gets triggered. The idea is the request that that worker is getting. I want to bifurcate those requests into four categories. Critical method, post, get, and test mode traffic. Now, when there is some huge amount of traffic coming in, right? if let's say a box is, a machine is busy to handle a lot of request volume, right? Then what might happen is I want to make sure that I have enough capacity. I have enough capacity to handle my critical priority request. So my critical high priority, medium priority, low priority. So under huge load, like here, if you observe, there is huge load that is here in the first three bars. And a lot of that is medium and low priority request. Right? And I'm operating at full capacity. Now, in this case, I would start trimming the load of low and medium priority request and give my high priority and critical priority more bandwidth. And the moment I see that incident is resolved and everything is back to normal and things get start like I'm starting. So I started shedding off my low priority request at the machine level. This is at the machine level. At that machine level, if there is high load, there is an incident that is going. I'm reserving my machine's capacity for critical and high priority things. While my test mode traffic and my other, my low, my low traffic thing or other low importance thing, I can shed those things off in favor of my critical methods and my high priority methods that I want to do. Right? So this is where it kicks in that now at my node level, I'm reserving my infrastructure, not like reserving, reserving, but if I want to shed the load, I can shed the load. Let's say it's a configuration that at my server level, shed the load for this thing. So it starts shedding off load for uh, test mode and get request, for example, in favor of post and critical methods.
right so this is what they do at us again this is very rarely gets invoked uh, but again during outages it does and if you want to shed off the load you shed off the load at that moment so that your existing infrastructure is capable enough of handling all the critical requests pretty fascinating stuff so the way they the way they bifurcated their their critical their, sorry their methods their request into critical and non critical and then get post it's so well structured and four lines of defenses that they've added request concurrent fleet and worker utilization it gives a very nice structure for our thinking to see how we are doing rate limiting like what's important at the end what matters is business product engineering engineering is always an enabler right so whatever matters to your business you prioritize that and this entire blog this entire rate limiting that stripe did it very beautifully showcases the importance of making sure that business is up and running even if something else has to be cut off even if something else has to be deprioritized something else has to be shed off they do it pretty fascinating yeah so this is all about what i wanted to cover in this one i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amazing that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton